Welcome to this edition of SFG Top Performance Feed and Grain Podcast. My name is Mark White, grain merchandiser for Smith Fertilizer and Grain. With me today, I have Kent Watson from Albia, the feed division at Albia, and Scott Gates from the Milo location. So we'll start off with a little bit of grain information. Uh, we are filming this on uh, June 1st. Uh, so we're starting a new month. Uh, last week, we had an up and down market just about all week. Had a record, or a, I'm sorry, a, a uh, limit move up in corn one day. They took most of that back away before the week was over. And we ended the week about three cents higher uh, on the Ju July corn, about a penny higher on December corn. Beans fared just a little better. Um, they were up, July beans were up four while the November beans were up 12 cents. Um, the market's already kicked off this morning and we're strongly higher. Uh, corn presently up uh, 30 cents, both old and new, and soybeans are up in that 40 cent range higher, mainly because of dry weather in this country. You know, we, we've been trading off of a demand-led rally for the last six months, and now we're finally getting into where the United States weather will, will play a, a part as we go forward and leading up to uh, pollination of corn sometime in the first half of July. They expect the corn planting report to come out today, 97, 98% done. Normal this time of year is 88%, so we're, we're way ahead of normal. Beans, even more dramatic. Uh, they expect it to be near 90% done. Normal, 67%. So that tells you the whole country has been able to get in and get the crops planted for the most part. And they also expect the, the first, uh, they'll have the first corn condition ratings out today for the year. And they expect that to show 70% uh, of the corn acres are in good to excellent condition. So again, the, the markets are trading on future weather and South America still has a, a dry pocket in Argentina primarily that is affecting their safrina corn or second crop corn. Uh, we're probably six weeks away from uh, early harvest on some of that and they'll start to get some actual reports, but that will help dictate our new crop prices as we go into the fall. We may have to fill in for some uh, corn that they can't supply to their export partners the last couple of weeks, we've seen a, a pullback in the corn market. Um, it was kind of led by liquidation in the in the funds. We topped out above 400,000 uh, contracts uh, long in the corn market. And Friday, they were down to about 268,000. So th they've reduced their, their holdings about a third that had to happen probably to, in order for this market to go higher. There comes a point where uh, you tap out the money sources almost. So uh, we've, we've reset, so to speak. Uh, we've got room now to go somewhat higher. Beans, as of Friday, it was estimated there's 139,000 contracts to the long side, uh, July corn or July beans, I'm sorry. Uh, again, that's, that's fallen back some from the, the highs but the bean market has held its own quite well. We, we've never uh, seen quite the pullback in the bean market as we did the corn. So as we go forward, they're both gonna trade off uh, several things, uh, not just uh, a weather, but uh, still back to supply and demand. Uh, it appears we're gonna have enough beans to make it to, to harvest at this point, but we could still see some dramatic uh, basis levels there in that July, early August time frame, as uh, the beans may not be in the right place. Uh, today, the interior markets are leading the charge because they're trying to hold the supplies uh, that they need to crush into the to, to the new crop. Uh, crush mar margins are still very, very strong. So there's an incentive there for those plants to, to run as hard as they can. In order to do that, they have to have the beans. So we're actually seeing beans moving backwards in, in some places. Normally they're moving toward the river this time of year for export. Uh, corn exports have kind of 
starting to hog the, the river, you might say, uh, with the amount of Chinese purchasing that we had. So those corn bushels are taking the place of a lot of bean bushels. That's allowing those beans to move back to the interior processors. So it's gonna be pretty interesting as we move forward. Uh, the increase today puts us uh, well above 13 again on new crop beans. Probably locally we'd be in that 13, 35 to 40 range. Uh, not a bad place to start making some sales if you haven't done so already. Uh, play this thing as you as it goes higher. Corn, uh, we'd be back up in that 535, 540 range. Uh, we flirted with $6 local new crop corn probably uh, three weeks ago. Uh, perhaps we can get back there, but not a bad idea to sell into the, the rally as we go back up and make sure you don't lose out on all of it. With that, we'll move to the feed side. Kent, what are you seeing down in Albia and the surrounding areas? Well, thanks, Mark. Um, as you were talking about, now you know, we're going into June, the summer months, and I thought maybe today I would sort of bring up some products that maybe you can use to help um, make these our cow herd as efficient as possible. Um, I know most people have probably already turned out or will be very shortly. And for those people that maybe have not uh, considered using or not currently using a breeder mineral, uh, they might want to take a real hard look at that. Um, these breeder minerals are specifically formulated to uh, increase the fish, breeding efficiency of these cows and bulls. And, uh, you know, we, nothing else starts until we get those cows bred. So it might be a good idea to maybe take a look at maybe uh, if you're not feeding the breeder mineral to, to consider doing so, uh, just feeding it through the breeding season. So uh, another, another product maybe that would help uh, definitely improve efficiency is feeding uh, calf creep. Uh, there's no other time in the calves life than right now that there is uh, more efficient than converting uh, feed into pounds. Um, we were fortunate enough to buy and, and uh, lock in some bush or some pounds of, of uh, calf creep uh, back in March. Uh, and even though the price of calf creep that is a little more expensive than last year, it is considerably cheaper than if you had to go out and buy some today. Um, and then another, another product now we're going into the summer is, is fly control. Uh, for those people that maybe haven't uh, purchased a fly control mineral already, um, there's a product that's being used that's gaining more and more popularity all the time, and that's uh, using garlic. Um, it's something that you could purchase a, a five gallon pail of it. Uh, it'll treat about two tons of mineral. It adds about, you add about eight and a half ounces per 50 pound bag. Um, and you don't have to go out and, and purchase like a two ton minimum. Um, garlic is not a, a, a larvicide, it is strictly a repellent. Um, when the, cat, the cattle eat the, the garlic, it emits an odor through the skin and its, and its breath. And it re basically keeps not only flies, all types of flies, but mosquitoes, lice, and ticks uh, from feeding on the animal, which, you know, that's, uh, that's an uh, extra bonus uh, because, you know, that's a way to keep it maybe prevents the spread of diseases such as anaplasmosis. So, um, like I said, it, it adds about two, two and a half cents per head per day, but it's, uh, again, it's, it's getting more and more popularity all the time. So, uh, those are just a few of the things that we can maybe use, be using this summer. Uh, going forward that might help improve our efficiency. And if you have any questions on any of these products, be sure and give us a call here. Thanks, Kent. Uh, makes you kind of wonder if that garlic thing would work for humans. You know, maybe we need to eat a little garlic every day. Well, I, I was sat next to people that really stood and it sort of repelled me, so I don't know. Maybe it would be <laughs> <laughs> Understand. Well, Scott, let's get a uh, report from up in the northern part of the country for us. Uh, from Milo, thank you. 
Yeah, Mark, what a difference two weeks has made. Had some nice timely rains and grass is 100% better now than it was two weeks ago. Seen some hay going down yesterday, so it is that time of year again. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about creep feed and uh, like the self-limited feed. Now's the time to start thinking about creep feed. As expected, prices are up from last year doing, due to the commodity markets. This makes producers ask, can I afford to creep feed this year? The short answer is yes. If you feed a quality pelleted creep, your cost of gain will be less than the projected calf market for next fall. So there is still a pretty decent return on investment. However, when you get later in the season, your calves get to eat and too much creep feed, you might need to slow them down a little bit and that's where you can use a self-limited or a intake controlled feed product. This will help keep their intakes down around 1% of their body weight and help keep your cost of gain under control. An example of this would be if your pelleted creep is 17 cents a pound and the limited ration is 20 cents a pound, at six pounds a day, it's gonna cost you a dollar two with the creep and a dollar 20 with the limiter. You kick that up to eight pounds a day and your costs are gonna go up to dollar 36 with the pelleted creep and a dollar 20 with the limiter. So this is how a limiter can start paying you back. It also pays not only on cost per day, but also at sale time. As your calves start over consuming on pelleted creep, they tend to get a little fleshy and everybody knows that they stand a pretty good chance of getting discounted at the sale barn. By controlling their intakes, we can keep them green and just putting on muscle, which helps them bring top dollar at the sale barn. We have several options for self-limited feed. We do have a Hubbard product, Pasture Maximizer, that we did get a deal on this year here. It's got a very attractive price on it. However, when this product's gone, that price will probably be gone with it. So if you have any interest in using a limited feed, give us a call and check price on this or other products. Well, thanks, Scott. You know, people ask, you know, we're, we're going into the off season as far as uh, farming, you might say, uh, although we still have a lot of acres to spray, particularly post acres, doing a lot of side dress, uh, both liquid and, and urea for the next uh, probably three weeks. But uh, a lot of other things go on in this company and we're already working on getting ready for fall harvest, uh, doing elevator uh, maintenance and improvements. Uh, the big project, of course, is at Milo but uh, all of our elevators the next two months will get gone through with a maintenance program, make sure everything is uh, ready to go, lubricated and uh, properly fixed. So we are already looking forward to harvest, even though it's uh, three months away, but that time will, will travel fast. Well, that wraps up today's edition of SFG Top Performance. Thank you for joining us.